This is Justin Stone from EliteBaseball.tv coming to you from the Majestic Coaches Corner. Players are starting to go outside, playing our first games, and what we often see is sometimes a disconnect from success levels in practice and in the cage to what's going on in the field. And there's several factors for this, but a couple of them from the physical standpoint come from increased adrenaline when we're in a competitive situation that may not be present in practice or a cage, and anxiety. Both of these things heighten the central nervous system, increase the rate of breathing, which tends to speed up the hitter in the batter's box. And we know that poor tempo leads to poor mechanics and makes hitting a baseball almost impossible to do. So when the coach told you take that deep breath and try to slow things down, that actually means something because that can get our central nervous system back into that cage mode, that practice mode where we're much more comfortable. But on top of that anxiety, there's a lot of other exterior factors that can affect, in a negative way, the athlete's performance. So what I came up with is what I call a stress test to try to find out from the athlete's perspective what are the things that are making the player anxious that could be holding back performance. And sometimes this is hard for them to articulate in front of a player or coach or parent because one of those factors may be the stressor. So putting something in writing where they can do it in private and then you can discuss one-on-one -on -one from player to coach can often bring these things to the surface, identify the problem, and then find a remedy for it. So I'm going to go through those now and we'll put this online today too on Jim's website as well as our EliteBaseball.tv website and you're welcome to use it. First is the fear of letting down teammates in a competitive situation. Baseball, it sometimes is an individual sport, me against the pitcher but the rest of the team is relying on my success in the batter's box. So when we have the game on the line or I'm expecting to move a player over, there's anxiety there of the fear of failure, letting my teammates down who are counting on me. And what we have to do in this situation is try to take out all of the negative things that could happen and focus simply on what I need to do to do my job well, seeing a good pitch and putting my swing in my approach on it. Next is fear of letting down the coach. You know, we have those people in our lives that we look up to as mentors. Coaches are one, some of those people, and we hate to let them down. So when they look at him in the third base coaching box, and he's relying on me, and he's giving me that fist pump, he wants me to do well, and I fail in that situation, I feel like I'm letting him down. So oftentimes what we do as hitters is we get paralyzed sometimes because it's easier to not act at all than to act and fail and let that person down. Getting yelled at by a coach or a parent. As youth players, one of the main things that go into players not enjoying the game of baseball anymore, and we see that big decline from the age of 12 to 13, is it becomes stressful for them because baseball is a game built around failure. I don't have to tell you that. But in those times of failure, how are our, our coaches, our mentors acting towards us? The yelling at us, it doesn't help. And when we're yelling at a game, oftentimes it makes performance worse, not better. So yelling at players can often be a major stressor. Interaction of the player with the player during a game or after a game by a parent. You have those helicopter parents that hang around the dugout all the time. Or we know if we do poorly in a game and I go back to the car, I'm going to hear it the entire ride home. Or when I get home around the dinner table, the same thing occurs there. What I suggest to alleviate this anxiety around interaction with a parent during a game or after the game is just a cool down period. If we have a helicopter parent, I often ask them, let's, let's have your corner be in left field rather than around the dugout. You can still watch the game. I just want to limit your interaction with the player during the game. Let the coaches and the players do their jobs. Or a cool down period in the car or dinner time. If that's the time that you're usually discussing baseball with your child, let's limit that. Have a cool down time, some self-reflection, and then we can address it at a later time that you seem fit. Worrying about personal statistics. This happens with our older guys. Worrying about, you know, I'm two hits away from being a 400 hitter. And in my mind, if I'm a 400 hitter, I'm going to be an all-state player. Or maybe that college is going to give me that scholarship. In reality, statistics play a very small part in the relevance of what you're going to do one day as a baseball player. As a former college coach and a recruiter, I didn't even care about statistics because it's all relevant against the competition you're playing against. So worrying about statistics is usually something that's self-imposed and really makes no big difference in terms of uh, my success in the future of the game. Another one for younger kids is getting hit by the ball. The first time or the first thing that young hitters often look at is, is this ball going to hit me 
And if the answer is no, now I'm ready to swing. The swing from these athletes looks like it has very poor tempo because they're not reacting to the swing portion of it until the ball is about halfway there and they know it's not going to hit them. Sometimes we don't ever know that. We try to address it from a mechanical standpoint. In reality, they're just afraid of getting hit by the ball. So this test can help bring that to the surface and we can talk about that. Fear of failure in front of friends and or a girlfriend. You have your friends coming to watch you play during a game. I have a girlfriend that I really want to impress. You can obviously see why there could be anxiety surrounded by that. Disbelief in one's ability. Lack of self-confidence. If players have put in the work, I always tell them, if you put in the time and practice and during the cage, then that time in the game is really your reward. The only person that should be worried about their disbelief and their ability are the people that haven't put in that time. Unfortunately, it doesn't usually work that way because the people that invest the most time in a practice usually take this on the hardest and they worry about failure the most. So it's trying to reverse that, saying I've put in the time, I've put in the time to make my ability the best that I can, therefore I want to use this game as a reward and use it that way. Next, fear of not, succeed, not succeeding in a situation. So we have a specific situation in the game, and oftentimes I said this will paralyze a player. Rather than thinking about all the things that could go right in the situation, we think about all the negative things that could happen. I mentioned earlier, getting a player over. It's kind of very similar to the one of fear of failure in front of your teammates, because baseball is a team-oriented game, but there is a lot of self-pressure you could put on on oneself because of the individual battle between the pitcher and the player. And finally, Things that are outside of baseball that you bring to the field that day. So the, the fear of not thinking about the game so much and more worried about homework, girlfriend situations, things going on at home that can take your concentration away from what's happening on the field. This too will limit a player's success. So we've identified about 10 things here that I say on a level of one to five scale, one being the very smallest, five being the very largest. What is stressing this athlete out and hindering their performance. Once we bring these things to the surface, now we've got something specific we can identify and work on, make your players better during that game situation, more of a reflection of what they're doing in practice. To see this on our website, go to EliteBaseball.tv. And until next week, I'm Justin Stone, coming to you from the Majestic Coaches Corner, and we'll see you on the field.